pünktlich wie die Maurer. <lacht> There he is. <lacht> okay, then start the meets the speakers and let us start, I, I would say, uh, in the uh, order of the presentations, maybe. So first was uh, Thomas, uh, Mr. Webdim Proabab. Uh, thanks for that one. And also, uh, he almost proked us actually um, ATT for Chate Builder, right? <laughs> <laughs> so how is it actually, Thomas, that we always use the bleeding edge technology at SAP? What do you mean with that, with JBuilder? <laughs> so we started in JBuilder, you know. <laughs> uh, it was so close that we would uh, still support JBuilder. <laughs> uh, okay, um, but now back to meet the speakers. The, so Thomas, um, you are a little bit longer at SAP than uh, most of us actually work with SAP. Right? Yes, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we had uh, today a nice, a nice session out and in the morning, the keynote about innovation. And it was like the last 10 years what happened actually. But uh, I, I guess you're longer than 20 years at SAP. So, um, or even longer maybe. So 24. what do you think actually, what, what happened over, over the last decades when it comes to innovation, not just ADT? Um, I think we had a longer period of um, innovations in the area of business by, business by design. That was maybe the reason why we did not see too much innovations in the uh, classical ERP stack. But we are, we are now uh, getting most of the innovations, I think, also in the S4 stack. Was the time with this NJAP? <laughs> yeah, this was then. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, to to build some bridge from a uh, new ABAP technology and all the clean core and testing stuff uh, to you and the ABAP and SAP tooling. Um, Christian uh, talked about also about CCAT and the CCAT uh, testing future in the cloud is still based on the classical value hashtag statements or is there any uh, is anything planned in, uh, for, for this? Um, what we have for the s public cloud is the so-called test automation test automation tool which is to automate tests in the area of UI. Mm -hmm. and also for APIs, that means it's similar to, to ICAT, that you can record your, um, um, your handling, let's say, in the, in the, in the user interface, or in the viewer UIs, and this is recorded. And then you can uh, replay this um, during uh, upgrade events. For example, what we're currently doing is to use this in pre-upgrades when the s 4 public cloud is upgraded. This is then more or less the, the similar approach here. Okay. But nothing with a developer API that can be uh, reused in future. Sorry, what do you mean? But uh, SACAT also delivers some uh, developer API that you can just consume the data for building and running your uh, unit tests. But this is not planned so far in any way in, in the cloud at all. Or as far as you know, no, not that okay. I know. Sad. <laughs> oh, and uh, Christian, oh, yeah. Christian, I, uh, if I got it right, you're actually based in Berlin. Yes. Um, so, how how is actually living in in Berlin? as an SAP consultant, because you actually put it very uh, much away yeah. from, from SAP headquarters. So if any any SAP related event is happening in Waldorf or if DSIG is doing something in Waldorf, I mean, you're more or less out of it. Because um, you not, have to travel six hours or seven hours. Yeah, um, I think it was in 2018, we had a Stammtisch here in, in, um, in Hack, Hack, the place is called Hackischer Markt. Yeah. Um, but since... Um, 
everything happened. I think 2018 was the last time this one happened. I really would like um, to happen it again, but I don't know if the um, the coordinator, I don't know what happened to him, if he's still there. Uh, Oliver, Oliver cool. if, you're, if you're listening, <laughs> Please. He, was, he was on the chat in the, in the morning. But, but there yeah. was also the Stammtisch in uh, August 2019 uh, uh, in parallel to the SIT Berlin. Uh, if yeah. not, you can fund your own Stammtisch. Okay. You just need to invite a few people, uh, reach, reach <laughs> out and, and see what's going to happen. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> I, I, I heard that the CTO of SAP lives in, in what is it, not Berlin, it's Potsdam. Potsdam yeah. Maybe he's yeah. coming over. <laughs> okay, yeah, maybe we can, I can have a look into it. Maybe we can reopen the Stammtisch. Yeah. <laughs> I think it, it would be nice, it would be a good exchange for, for um, information and everything else design patterns and whatnot, everything that comes along with it. So I think it's a very good idea to yeah. reopen it, reintroduce it. Yeah, I mean, to... what, what could go wrong? Uh, nobody shows up, but then you are at least still at the bar. <laughs> 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 what so... could go wrong? Is <laughs> 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 Yoko can get drunk alone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or he chooses the location without serving beer. <laughs> 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 But I think then if, if we do that, it's it's basically destined to fail. If there is no beer at the bar, <laughs> then it's it's destined to fail. I don't see any other outcome. <laughs> and uh, and you, uh, Pankaj, how, how did you actually discover the SAP world? How did I discover? Okay, I uh, it all started 11 years back. And, uh, you know, I was getting training in one company and starting with DDIC uh, objects learning. And then, uh, you know, I was getting training. I thought of moving into something else as well, but I know, I know how it attracts, but yeah, I mean, I love a bad programming. So, you know, I started that. Uh, <laughs> and now you have seen in my, you know, slides as well. I then I jumped into many areas of a BAP, not all, because it's hard to cover so many things and so many technologies. But yeah, I I think in, in eleven years I've learned a couple of things which will be helpful for the my clients and customers. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Tobias, some uh, some more questions. At ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh... uh, Pankaj, do you also have um, customers in S4HANA public cloud or uh, some customers that are on the way to, or how did you get uh, connected uh, to the clean core topic? I connected with clean core. I was following uh, public cloud announcements. I've mm -hmm. never personally worked on public cloud. I don't have exposure, but yes, I do have exposure on S4 HANA on-prem systems okay. from 99 onwards till 2021. And yeah, so, but yeah, public cloud, I'm just, you know, following, yeah. for example, I followed Thomas uh, Fiddler and other other SAP advocates as well to get the, the public cloud updates. But yes, now it is all landed into on-prem as well. So it's exciting. Uh, I mean, I will, I will definitely get something in 2022 now to do a lot of hands on a web cloud. But I asked this question in the 2021 decade to Thomas Jung, like at that time a web cloud was not announced and there is no ATC variant as well with respect to a web cloud development default. Then I asked him, can I go into SC38 and select the web language words and as a web for cloud? And he said, yes, try to do it. Then I asked him, can we call this as embedded steampunk in on-premise? He said that, yes, you can call it, but now they have officially introduced into it. So I was exploring some solution. Then I found this stuff. Okay, it's already there, but we are not officially named it something. We are not using it. And that's why I mentioned that if you try to use those SE38 standard programs, try to look into in the system and try to write some class, let's say, then it is possible in older versions as well. So yeah, mostly on-prem experience I have. 
Yeah, okay. But, but the big question is, uh, uh, every time SAP is talking about the cloud customers, but I do, uh, know so less cloud customers for now. Uh, a lot of companies that are all, only have their little sales company somewhere in at the end of the world on running on Asahana Cloud, but uh, not that much. Uh, I personally know. So perhaps Thomas, you know some more bigger players that are. Discussion is relevant for Thomas. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Since he's from SAP, he has to give some answers, right? So. Okay, let's check the pipeline. Sorry, a few seconds. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> no, Thomas, 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 I, I would. We, we didn't lot... ask for VS Code for now, so <laughs> we are nice to you. <laughs> uh, Thomas, I wrote a lot of messages about uh, ATT enhancements. Uh, I'm still waiting for you to implement them until tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> so, coming back to the question with the S4 HANA public cloud, <laughs> we, announced, we announced this uh, embedded steampunks, I think a few weeks back so you cannot uh, expect uh, that the uh, adoption goes through the uh, uh, mm -hmm. ex extensive that much but uh, we are definitely on the uh, right track because customers said that on yep. the one hand side the scope is, um, to, is to, um, limited so not all business processes are available and the other thing was the extension capabilities so we close now with the new S4 HANA public cloud both gaps, and therefore I'm quite convinced that the um, yeah the adoption will grow in that area. Yeah, but this for but example it's... also on the on the partner side because typically you know this as well. Partners jump on that train where a lot of customers are, and when I see how many partners are engaging with the S4 HANA public cloud then I'm sure that they are not doing this because they want to have some fun, but because they see uh, money as well in that, that area here. Mm -hmm. And now with, with the announcement to have the same approach also for, um, for the uh, private cloud and for the on-premise, I think um, more uh, ways are, are possible now. So you can start on-premise, go into the private cloud or directly go to public cloud, I think. So more options are available. So. I'm quite but, optimistic. But, it, but, it, but as Pankaj already introduced, uh, Embedded Steampunk was already announced last year at TechEd. But yeah, not, announced from almost the, nobody take took care about it. And uh, now it's with other, under the name other cloud, it's officially re released. No, it was not available last year. So in yeah, it was, it was announced that it's going to come some day, perhaps. So, one maybe year, <laughs> one year later exactly <laughs> yeah but now it's really officially available so we can use it with the 22 or 8 release i'm talking about we can use it uh, i mean back to christian um nice uh, presentation about testing um one problem i always have is when it comes to testing is it, it consumes time i mean you still have to write your test you have to get the data run it and so on how do you actually manage to get all the budget to, to do the testing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, can we What's please move trick? to the next question? <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, we are still working on the convincing part of, con um, we are still working on convincing that the management that it's actually a good idea to um, test while you develop um because there is i don't i have this one picture in mind where you have this um curve where it shows the costs of solving an error while it's during the testing phase or the development phase that the factor is like um it only costs one unit of money more um during the testing phase the factor is times four i believe during the um, integration test, I want to say it's 10, 10 times more. And during production, it costs 640 times more to fix an error than it would have done. I can maybe like edit or I don't know. Um, it costs a lot more to fix an error in production phase than it would have would, um, would cost if it is like during the development or during um, testing phase. But nevertheless, we're still working on the convincing part. I'm not 
Sure, but I, um, I don't know. I would like if if we would um, convince all the other developers. Maybe it's just that during the estimating, we're saying no. I don't need a day. I need like two days. So we're just um, doing it behind their back. But yeah, it's it's an, a very tough problem to actually do the development or the unit testing during the development phase. Yeah. This will also be interesting, uh, looking now at Thomas with all these APIs released, because many people, when they're going to switch for the em embedded or for the uh, uh, new API approach uh, above cloud, uh, this will be interesting because a lot of knowledge actually needs to be learned. And this will also in increase, I guess, uh, the, the effort. Or is there any magic quick fix available, Thomas, that is, looks at, at Mara select I don't know, uh, anything for Mara and you actually can transform it automatically to the correct uh, CDS view that is released? Yeah, so we have we have thoughts in that direction, but uh, we also have a lot of experience from the existing big fixes from the S4 areas. And uh, sometimes the real examples does not look like these examples that we have in our demo. So. There are a lot of uh, if statements as well in the CDS views behind. So um, I'm, I'm sure we can give some guidance a little bit more that we have currently. Guidance in the area maybe of having some um, code snippets to display, okay. Um, for example, when you're calling a body in that way, a BAPI, sorry, BAPI, then, current, then with a um, uh, rough facade, it looks completely different. And we're giving some guidance in, in form of, um, of uh, code snippets and things like that. If there will be a, a quick fix available for the select statements, maybe in restricted use cases, yes. But 100%, uh, I, I can't believe with the knowledge that I have currently. Uh, there are two questions. Uh, one to uh, Thomas. Um, Stefan Rutzmoser was asking for a, a cooler, um, what to say, a data preview in ADT. <laughs> he wants to have some table control with all the features he, he probably uh, know from the old world because it's very restricted. I, uh, I also got the impression. Doing multiple, yeah, filter, yeah. doing multiple filters on one column and so on and uh, yeah, so catching catching up with the ALV is not an easy task, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> but but you're working on it, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I think that the other question from uh, Lawrence goes to uh, Christian. who talked about uh, the time effort when you're searching for an error in development or in production. And um, I think he's, uh, uh, Lawrence was asking for the source of this uh, numbers by, uh, where he told us. Do you know the, the, the source? Sorry, can you repeat the, the, the last question? I didn't get the, the second part. My connection dropped something. Oh, okay. Um, you talked about several numbers, uh, about it, it takes 100 times longer to find an error in production than in development. Yeah. And um, um, Lawrence was asking for the, um, the source of the numbers where you uh, have them so, from. Um, that's a very good question. Um, I just looked it up like last week, but but I didn't remember the the actual source. I can, if you want, I can edit in in the yeah. um, the slides. Um, okay. Edit in the slides as an extra um, the last page, something like that, and then it, it would show would show the, the the source. I don't have it right on no. me. But that number so actually, uh, I also think you can. It were once included in the Fiori design guidelines principle. Uh, fail fail earlier uh, because uh, the money increases when you have to fix it later on. Yeah. Um, Stefan wrote it for Thomas again. Uh, copy multiple lines for example. It's a feature that he's missing in the data preview. Mm -hmm. So you can read the chat afterwards and then. Tell us a uh, delivery date, perhaps. <laughs> okay. Tomorrow. Thank you. So, looking at the time, we are already uh, uh, hitting the coffee break.
or the, the longer late afternoon break before the, the last block. Um, I would say thank you to all of the presenters and for your presentations, for your talks, for your input and uh, everything we could learn from you. And then uh, say goodbye to next till next time and uh, uh, to everybody so have a nice uh, break and relax.